Hi. Hi. <laughs> and it's a big week. How are you yeah. holding up? I'm doing all right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all we can do. That's about it. That's about all we can do. Sometimes it is like limping from one thing to another. Oh, yeah. And we just have to do it. Just do it, damn it. Yep. Yep. We just have to do it. It's just like it's tiring. I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm tired. I'm very tired. It, mm -hmm. it, it's like the Blazing Saddles song. Oh, I don't know what that is. On, Blazing Saddles was, well, I'm tired, so tired from coming and going and going and coming. I'm tired. It, she was a, a, in a brothel. Oh, in okay. We, it was a very, it was a very naughty song from that movie. And it was uh, very funny. I know the movie Blazing Salads. Mm -hmm. so, so. Blazing, Blazing <laughs> Salads where they, the Remain and the Iceberg Duel. That's a, that actually is a really good name for a restaurant. If anyone's thinking Play? about opening a restaurant or a table, blazing, oh, right? blazing salads, blazing salads, you are welcome. Um, <laughs> that song with you singing it sounded more like it was coming from Transylvania. I'm sorry to say. Well, that was her accent in the. Oh, okay. She was she was she was kind of doing like a Marlena Dietrich character. Ah, I so to be, was she? I want to be alone. No, that was Greta Garbo, but she was Jeez, she was man. doing like, yeah. But Marlena Dietrich, you know, was a German actress and and actually a very uh, brilliant woman. She's why we have like Bluetooth, you know. She invented that back in World War Two. The, the this mechanism, um, and was a silver screen starlet. But um, I believe it was it wasn't Madeline Kahn. I'm trying to remember which actress it was. But anyway, she played this madam of the saloon mm -hmm. and they asked her how she was doing so I was, i'm tired so tired of coming and going and going and coming and everything was a dublon ton yes so, well i can yeah now yeah. you've explained the context i understand yeah. a little bit for yeah. those interested at home i have the buff asleep at my feet he's not impressed Aww. with me because of the time we are recording this is his playtime. And he's Sorry, Buff. he's very distressed. But he'll be fine. Poor Buff. He'll get over it. And so yeah. But you know, it's easier than having toddlers. I don't know yes. how people have yeah. children in their fifties. Or no. late forties no, no, and, and Yeah, no judgment, but I yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no no judgment whatsoever. Mm. Um, because if that's what you want and you get to have your children in your late forties and you have toddlers in your fifties. God my, bless you. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say because I remember having toddlers and being so tired. So Oh my god. Tired. You know I, the yeah, the year my son turned five. Mm -hmm. I was ready for Christmas in August, and wow. I and I mean like ready. I have never achieved such a thing since. And I was like, why? And I realized it's because he'd slowed down, and I hadn't. I was still uh, in the yeah yeah. See, I had two boys, and they <laughs> egged each other on constantly. I have. And I don't know whether I've ever told this story on here. Uh, forgive me if I have, but I've been in a shop once and I turned to ones. I was buying something. I was at the counter. It's not like I'd left them and was shopping. I had mm -hmm. to turn to my back to pay for one purchases. And there was a crowd gathered outside the glass front of the shop. It was in a shopping mm -hmm. center, all looking. And I'm like, what are they looking at? No, but it was my two children who were undressing the mannequins in the shop window. Nice. Nice. Gotta love children. And then you hear people say, what kind of mother? Yeah. Anyone. A any Any kind. mother. Any, any. Mine, oh. um, when we first got to the States, it's a very different thing to having kids in the Middle East. Okay, so first of all, everybody has an eye out for any little one there. Mm -hmm. You never have to worry. Kids are safe. Okay. okay. And it's not the case here. 
right? No. What does my boy do? Because he's got five planets in Gemini. He could <laughs> walk like with ninja like silent skills from birth. Yeah. You know, like, silent, silent. When he first started Taekwondo and they were trying to teach silent running and he did it perfectly the first time, his teacher, he was like seven, his, his sensei turned and looked at me and she goes, Oh, mom. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So he hid in the clothes racks. I had to get a store shut down and I made everybody be quiet because he wasn't coming out. We called his name. We called his name. Everybody's looking for this kid. I'm thinking my kid's gotten kidnapped. <gasps> the store has now literally like locked down. And then I hear this faint. <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so younger listeners if you are listening and we're not assuming we have a younger audience but no, if we do we have younger people and you want to know why your parents embarrass you mm -hmm. this would be why yes and if somebody asks you how to manage technology or they can't manage their phone or whatever can you just remember that they taught you how to use the toilet yeah so be a, a bit kinder with them yeah. because I often will ask my children how to, I don't know, I'm having trouble with the television at the moment and I cannot get it connected to the internet. I have had this television. I am not joking. I have um, a sofa in my kitchen, which I thought I'll just get an old, you know, not an old, a small television for. It'd be great yeah. when I'm in the kitchen doing things. Yeah. And I've got a television in the living room, so it's not like I can't watch television. I bought this television before Christmas. Mm -hmm. I have not set it up. I cannot get it connected to the internet. I know that I have to phone the people and say there's something wrong with this television because I can't mm -hmm. connect it to the internet. But have I got round to it? It's on my list to do tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm going right. to get it done tomorrow. You've got time off this week. I've got, yeah, the, the time is filling up really quickly though. It does, doesn't it? Because nature hates a vacuum. Yeah. So yesterday it was catching up on my mm -hmm. own podcast and doing some content for my podcast, which I still haven't finished. And then today I got that. I had to have a tele whole telephone call that I ended on up being on the phone for like two hours with somebody that's going to be doing some work for me, which I am desperate for and very grateful for, but it took up time. And then I mm -hmm. rushed out and I had to have that scan on my back and then I've come back and we're mm -hmm. recording this. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow I've got this and that and the other. And I'm like, how am I going to get all the piles of paperwork that I have to fill out and mm -hmm. my admin done? And yeah, anyway, mm -hmm. I'm just having a whinge. We are going to be cheerful. It's Matilda having a bit of a whinge today and it's grateful right. that she doesn't have toddlers. Yeah. I love toddlers though. However, I went out for lunch on the weekend for my birthday. It was on Sunday. It was just a mm -hmm. very quick lunch with a friend who picked me up. We took buffy and we sat outside. If you sit mm -hmm. outside at a restaurant and there was no play yeah. area at this restaurant, whereas there's quite a few in Australia, mm -hmm. it's very common to have play areas at restaurants that have outside seating. And there was four mm -hmm. bench table and chairs. So mm -hmm. we sat on the one right at the end with buffy, ordered our meal and waited for it to arrive. There was a bench seat behind us and then one next to it. There was 10 children that had obviously come out for lunch with their parents, but their parents mm -hmm. said, you go outside and annoy the people outside, all right? Don't have a problem with them. Kids are kids, okay? Yeah, exactly. That's Kids are kids. Yeah. However, there was one child who was would be two, if that, toddling along. Mm. Other kids are left responsible for this, but I have what is known commonly as a pit bull dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do not need to muzzle him because he is very placid. However, mm -hmm. he has had no experience around children. And mm -hmm. when people come up to me and say, can my child pat your dog? My immediate response is, do you mind if we don't? He's not used to children and I don't know what his reaction will be. But not that he's ever hurt anyone or growled at anyone or done anything mm -hmm. like that. But mm -hmm. my job is to protect my dog. Yeah. This toddler kept running full pelt at Boof. Uh. And I kept having to jump in between the two mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. And then 
who I was with turned around to the kids and said, how about you go and play in the little alcove over there where all the balloons are, which they did. Mm-hmm. They were very good and they did do that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. this toddler kept coming back. And I'm like, where? A toddler should not be, um, like, two years old is too young because... It's too young to be without adult supervision, yeah. Yeah, and it's not my yeah. responsibility. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was an unpleasant meal. But... No. And my dog's not a dangerous dog. It's just no, I'm not putting him in so... that position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But she kept running <laughs> full pelt and then kicking a balloon at him... And he was, he just got up on the bench beside me and expected my lunch. So right. it was sorted. Right. But yeah, it just, it's uncomfortable when that happens. It does. I, it, it kind of bothers me because I taught my children how to behave. It doesn't mean they always behaved. Um, yeah. But we had expectations. And when those expectations weren't met, I, mm-hmm. I would literally go take my children and sit in the car until we agreed and it, not like they were punished it just like okay if this is what we're doing we're gonna do it over here time and place right yeah mm-hmm. and um i get a little like i don't think children should be not in public at all i i, I don't like well, that how are they gonna learn but, if they not? exactly exactly and yet when we have really little ones it really you know i know it's tiring i know I know we need a break, but if it's a group of adults, people can take turns helping with the little one. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, um, I, yeah. I because was, kids yeah. shouldn't be responsible for kids they either. They shouldn't be responsible for a little person. You know? And I, yeah. I lost, I, talking about losing children, I lost my youngest once at mm-hmm. a birthday party. The birthday party was his brother's. And we were in this national park and we had God. sort of hired an area of the national park mm-hmm. and it, the party started at two. We had, um, there was lots of entertainment mm-hmm. and everyone had a lolly bag at the end, which in mm-hmm. Australia is a real tradition. You get this bag full of lollies at the end of a party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was packing up all the food and the toys and the presents mm-hmm. and everything to take to the car. And all of a sudden I've gone, where's Charlie? And oh, we God. are, and it's starting to get quite dark, not dark, oh, but God. it's dusk. And we, right. we cannot find him anywhere. And we oh, are geez. in the middle of a national park. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I saw him two minutes ago. There was enough adults around right. that would have seen a kid with bright red hair disappear. Right. Right. So we're calling his name. We're a, we've got the park ranger out looking for him. Um, we were about to call the SES, who would have the helicopters and the police and right, everything out, right. because it was going to be dark and it was going to be a dangerous situation. Right. And I've gone, I'm just going to check the car. And he's in his car seat. He's got his hands through the loops of the car Aww. seat, eating his lollies. Aww. He had taken, him, taken himself to the car. Oh, eating. he was quite happy. He hadn't missed us at all, but he'd, and I didn't know that I had left the car unlocked. Right. I thought it was locked and it was just a whole right. situation. So, right. yeah. Right. I lost so my again, child. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it can We're happen. All... And that's very different than consciously choosing to be inattentive. And... I just, I don't like that at all. And yeah, I, I am either. always. It's not good for the kids at all. Yeah. I'm always aware mm-hmm. of their behavior around well the grown adults now it's not my problem it's theirs Mm -hmm. but um when they were little you know who were they affecting who you know Mm -hmm. also who was around that shouldn't be around Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly you know and i traveled the world with my kids when they were toddlers you know from five and up we went Mm -hmm. through europe numerous times so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, i kept them in check I did because we lived in a state park. Speaking of rangers, I was married to one and we lived yes. in a very popular destination. And there's a lot of public that comes through, you know. So, A, dan- you know, keeping an eye out for stranger danger, but also not wanting my children who were bored to go do stupid things with the public, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> which occasionally happened. Um, <laughs> my son, who's I like to call him Jokey Smurf. Okay. And uh, at the grand opening of one of the parks, 
um, because it was a 1934 fishing resort that opened to the public. We were there for three years before it opened while they did all the studies. And on the day of the opening, it was a big affair, right? And Washington State Park's um, mascot is called Eager Beaver, right? right? I know. There were many inappropriate there jokes, are many about jokes about it. There the are many jokes about the beaver. Many jokes about the beaver. But it's a it, it's a costume, okay? Mm-hmm. And it's creepy looking, okay? As the many beaver. as <laughs> many as many mascot costumes kind of are. And mm-hmm. my son was um he was 12. And you had you had two boys, 12-year-old boys. You know uh-huh. how they are. And he thought it was one of the volunteers that he knew really well in that costume. Okay. It was not. It was someone from headquarters. Okay. From mm. the head of the state agency. But we didn't know that, right? He thought it was Peg, who he had grown up with, right? Mm-hmm. So he walks up to said eager beaver and says, I know where you live. Oh, <laughs> right? Thinking it's somebody he knew who would know he was being a dork, right? Mm-hmm. Yusuf then finds out it wasn't Pig and comes to me and says, can we go home? <laughs> and doesn't tell me why. Mm-hmm. And and I said, well, we can't go yet, but I'll I'll be packing up in about an hour because I was running a hand spinning demonstration and we were talking about history and all sorts of fun stuff. And we go home, and Jeff is of course there for hours and hours and hours. Comes home at the end, he goes, "Oh my God, some parents." And I'm like, "What? What? Some parents?" And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, well, there was this kid who mm-hmm. threatened Eager Beaver's life," and I was like. I wouldn't judge. I wouldn't judge. And he's like, he's still going because he's like, really, this girl is like creeped out. And she's afraid she's going to get stalked now. And 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 I was like, hun, just hang on. I've got an answer for you. I know who it was. And, you know, and he's just going like, like, what kind of parents would leave this? And I was like, your son. It was your son. He was like, what? I said, he thought it was Peg. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's okay then. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of parents? Oh. Didn't you ever get the teenage boy to wear the suit, though? Because I worked for a state agency for years and my children were Thinkledoodle, which was the Vic Rhodes, the state Rhodes department mascot. Oh, wow. I made my children do that. No, we made them do like other stuff. So like my son, he volunteered for Center for Wooden Boats. And Mm -hmm. my daughter did interpretive walks, you know, type people what berries were what and what you could eat and couldn't eat. Because people thought blackberries, you know, blackberries are actually the most of the blackberries like you buy in the store you find those in the forest yeah they're actually invasive they're 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 not the native ones the native ones are really good um but anyway people would be like are they poisonous and like do you eat these that you buy in the store because they Mm-hmm. They're identical. <laughs> that's what i used to go with my grandmother i used to go mm-hmm. blackberry picking mm-hmm. on a regular occasion yeah, yeah. we lived and, in places yeah. where they were they grew wild Oh, yeah, they're just plentiful because they're so invasive. They uh-huh. bought them thinking the deer would eat them. Right, and the deer don't the deer like don't, them. well, they eat them, but they, it, it, these are just very, they're called Himalayas, and they're not uh, from the Pacific Northwest. Have you and, ever had a bird shit on your car after they've been at the blackberries? Yes. I it's lived, rather I annoying. I lived in a forest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not as bad as a bald eagle. No. Not as bad as a bald eagle. Eagle. So sometimes spirit sends us signs, Mm -hmm. but sometimes we don't listen. Yeah. And um, I had a bald eagle shit on my minivan three times in one week. When they, it takes up the entire side of the minivan. 
third time I figured it out. Yeah. 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 I could imagine that I get annoyed enough as when birds shit on my car. And but we don't listen to our own signs. You and no. I have done various re- we swapped readings quite a lot and we have given each other a few heads up. Heads up. And we're well, usually right with each other. So Yeah. Yeah. Quite interesting. What a shock. What a shock. What a shock. Because mm-hmm. I asked you about my son who is mm-hmm. relocating back to the town I'm in and looking for work. He's highly mm-hmm. qualified in what he does, so it's very specific. It's not mm-hmm. like any work. And he mm-hmm. didn't get one of the jobs he went for. And mm-hmm. I said to Laurie, he's very upset. And you said, come on, what's his birth time? What's his birth time? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you said he'll get an offer within two weeks. He's got two on the table. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I told you. That was very clear in his chart that there was uh-huh. better, you know, it, it, honestly, better stuff on the way that was a lot more stable. And he's Even very though that st- appeared to be a very good job, he was going for it, but it wasn't going to be stable. Well, it turned out it wasn't anyway, um, mm-hmm. because it was they they withdrew the job mm-hmm. itself. But um, mm-hmm. and he's also very psychic, as you saw in his chart, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like his mother. Like his mother, he is very much like me. Have I ever told you the story? This is this is the funniest thing that ever happened, hands down, and it is total coincidence. I travelled with both the boys to the United Kingdom. He would have been about eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And my family are about four hours out of London, so we got the train into London and it was the first time we were going to London as, you know, with kids. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had activities booked and ready because – with kids, you book your activities in advance. It's A, it's cheaper. B, you know your timetable. Yeah. Yeah. So he starts scratching his head on the train, didn't think much of it. And we got I got to the hotel with him and he says, oh, my head's really, really itchy. Now, my children have never had hair lice, ever. Mm-hmm. There is a myth out there that redheads don't get hair lice. I am here to tell you that that is not the truth mm-hmm. because I looked at his hair and I went, and he'd been playing with the kids next door to my parents, so I'm pretty sure that that's, where he, that's the only kids he'd been around. And mm-hmm. I looked at his hair and I went, oh, my God, he had hair, hair, loss, hair lice mm-hmm. all over his head. And I'm like, okay, well, we've got this, this, and this. What we'll do is we'll put your beanie on, we'll finish the day, we'll go to Boots the Chemist and get hair loss treatment, come home. We've not used any of the bedding, which is great. Treat everyone's head and we'll be fine. But put your mm-hmm. beanie on. If I have to bin the beanie, so be it. Right. So we've walked out of the hotel and we're on the South Bank in London, mm-hmm. near the London Eye, and we saw a Charlie Chaplin mine. And my Charlie, mm-hmm. my son, is absolutely fascinated with Charlie Chaplin. So we stood mm-hmm. and watched and he said, Mum, Mum, Mum can I have some money to put in his hat? And I said, yes. So I gave him some money and he's walked over and he's put the money in the hat and Charlie Chaplin has grabbed my son by his coat and pulled him to him and he's pulled his beanie off. Oh, God. And he starts pretending to be a monkey. Oh, God. (laughs) He flees from my son's head. And my son's head is full of hair lice and oh myself my god and my children's father are stood side by side we're speechless for a second we're like mouth open i don't know what to do in this moment in time you know that oh still feeling yes yes and charlie thinks it's hilarious and oh, he bet. hasn't put he hasn't made the connection between he's being defleed by Charlie Chaplin, and he's actually got fleas. Oh, so my God. I just, I haven't laughed, and I just felt so bad. And he's come running back. Did you see? Did you see? Did you get a picture? Did you get a picture? No, I didn't get a picture. I was too too mortified. Ooh. I shoved the hat on his head, and I said, come on, we're going to go and do the London Eye now. So that was. Right, and you're going to have fun, damn it. And you are. Right. Oh, oh, I, was, I was absolutely mortified. Then to top it off, we've gone into Boots the Chemist to get hair lice treatment and the poor lady serving us English was not her first language I think she must have been Polish or or a Mm -hmm. similar language Eastern European 
And my ex-husband has got a full head of hair. This guy has got a lot of hair. Mm-hmm. Right? And I said, can I please have some hair lice treatment, please? And she said, hair lice. And I said, yeah, hair lice. And she comes back with a container, a, a box of Rogaine. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's like we're looking at each other going, oh, my God. It was just one of those comedy of error <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah, one <laughs> after <laughs> the other after the other. But it, needless to say, that's the only time my children have got hair lice. They were both treated in a hotel room in London. I was treated. My ex-husband was treated. And we've never had them since. That's good. But it was a it was a funny That's occasion. That's hilarious though. That is but hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the the thousand deaths we die as parents. Um, oh, the embarrassing comments. There is no filter when it comes to children. And mm-mm. that snore that dulcic tone is oof, has nagged on to sleep. Oh. In disgust that he's not getting attention. Um, right. Yeah, the thousand deaths I have died from stories. My my cousin's son, oh, I had forgotten this story. So my cousin's son, so I've got lots of cousins, but these two mm-hmm. brothers, okay, um, I'm not going to name them, but they are brothers, and neither of them have been in the army, okay? So can I just mm-hmm. make this really clear that neither of them have served in active duty? Right. And one of them gets a phone call from their child's school and said, um, hello, um, we're wondering if we can be of any help. Is there anything you need? And said, no, is everything okay? Well, we heard what happened and we just want to offer our condolences and can we start a food chain? Is there, Mm -hmm. do do you need financial help? Apparently um, that his son had been to school and said, I'm sorry, my homework is late, but my uncle was fatally wounded in Afghanistan. Oh my God. Oh, to say that my cousin was so mortified and embarrassed. He said, I'm seriously thinking of moving. I don't know whether I need to sell the house. Do I go into witness protection? Right? Oh, I'm my sure. God. His child was seven years old at the time. <laughs> <laughs> His seven-year-old son. What a creative little critter. <laughs> His oh my God. Was like, and then my, uh, my his brother phoned him and said, I'm just calling from the dead. Is there anything you need? <laughs> oh my God. The school oh, were about well. to make an announcement and start a fundraiser and send meals home. And... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. But oh, the school wow. phoned to check that everything was okay and did they need anything? I mean, Jeannie. Oh, my God. You think you would send a... your. <laughs> What a smart little guy. That boy's at university now. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, that's smart. But uh that's yeah. funny and it's mortifying. Hard. It was it was more wow. My cousin literally said, oh, I think I'm gonna have to move on. So I'm gonna have to change catchment areas. He's gonna have to start a new school. <laughs> oh my god. But oh think of that. But yeah. That was smart. Oh wow! Very smart, oh, God. and just so embarrassing to come up with right. something like that because he forgot his spelling test. Right? Oh it, wow! It wasn't, it, you know, he it, it, it wasn't in the final year of university having to turn right. in a thesis. It was his spelling test. Yes, well, you save those diligent. excuses for the thesis. Yeah, yeah. You, you <laughs> hold those back when you first got to the states. Sarah was five and I, I, um, she had always been in a little private preschool and they wore uniforms. Right. Uh And here in America, kids don't wear uniforms unless they're in a Uh, private school. Right. uh And I managed to get her into a small parochial school, which would have been closer to the environment. She was, I was trying to create some. Right. I understand. Yeah. Just, just, she had gone through so many changes and I, she was a good child. <laughs> They're all a creative children. child. And um so the sister called me. Um 
to tell to she would they kept in touch with me a lot because they knew the story and they knew you know she got beautifully um supported okay? uh-huh. we all did and and they're very supportive of us and um the first call i got was sarah was very fascinated by anatomy She's very talented artistically, drew her first happy face at 18 months, okay? And you're either an artist, a musician, or a writer, even if we do other things in our family. So I always supported her artistic abilities. And um, remember, this is a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And my child in kindergarten was drawing anatomically correct human beings without clothes. Cool. Because she was fascinated by the human body, and I bought her a child's anatomy book. But what, as the as Sister Dolores, who was in her eighties and sadly passed the year they all finished kindergarten, (laughs) was was it was it that (laughs) class? You know, and she's like, I just want you to know that Sarah's a very talented artist. And I said, thank you. She is. And it would be lovely if she would draw people with clothes on. <laughs> and I'm in horror at this point because I'm thinking, oh, my God, they're going to think I'm some kind of perv. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. And so I managed I like and then I struggled. Like, how do I teach my kid that? But my God, Boof is funny. Um, can you hear? I'm sorry. I can't He's hear Boof. You don't need to apologize. It's so funny. I'm like, <clears throat> you people unimpress me. Um, he's, the, he's he's f- far away from my mic, but we all know how loud he snores. It's brilliant. It's like no, I sleep with boring. that. I sleep with that. I choose to be well, single, and I still listen. Have to listen to that. I don't think it's a bad compromise, though, because you don't have to put up with the other crap. No. No, no, no. I don't think it's a bad compromise, but I'm going to have to get myself some earplugs soon because, you know. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so funny. The next call I got, which was like a week later, because Sarah was trying to impress her teachers and a cute little boy in class um, because they were all bragging about what their parents did and their grandparents did. And Sister Dolores was, sorry, I was not in trouble for this. This was just a touch base call, mm-hmm. but I thought she was in trouble at first. So she's, they were asking, they, it was like they were discussing families or whatever that, you know, kindergarten, right? Yeah. My grandmother was born with baby Jesus and my grandpa was a dinosaur hunter. She was describing how old they were. Where did she get those descriptions from? Her imaginations. I like the dinosaur hunter. Next time I want to yes. re- tell someone they're old, I'm going to say, were you a dinosaur hunter? Were you a dinosaur like hunter? But yeah, I, I loved it. Grandma was born with baby Jesus. <laughs> I was like, are you trying to impress Sister Dolores or something? Because that was the name. But yeah. Yeah. So Grandpa's a dinosaur hunter because he's that old, <gasps> and he was probably about our age at this that time, or younger. No, he wasn't younger. Um, how old was he when she was five? If I was thirty, well, I was twenty nine, and Dad is the mom is twenty two. Dad's twenty four years older than. So about he was my age. Yeah, you're right. right. He was fifty four. Yeah. 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 So we're dinosaur hunters. We do, we we are really old to some people. My, I, I always say that to my audience. I'm like, I know I'm an old chick to you. I always say I'm an old chick. Um, but that's yeah. that's fine. I've got good life experience. My brother, my younger brother, started school the same day as my father started a new job. Now, mm-hmm. my father was the governor of various prisons in the United Kingdom. And mm-hmm. on his first day as a prison officer, before he was the governor, um, he it was the first day of my brother's school. So he started mm. school and said, my dad's gone to prison today. <laughs> and the teacher had to check out that information, 
with my mother. Nice. So, the the, the nice. things that children say. I they do. yeah. And I have been embarrassed on more than one occasion. My eldest once came out and because there was a new person working at his kindergarten or his kindy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I said, Oh, mm-hmm. what's she like? And she said, She's nice, but she's really fat. And I said, honey, we don't say that people are fat. She's just a bit bigger than the average person. I said, okay. And I said, just it's not nice to just go. It was only four. It's not nice mm-hmm, to describe mm-hmm. someone like that. We got in the car and we went shopping. And I was actually looking for something for an occasion that next weekend. And I tried on mm-hmm. a dress and I said, does this make me look fat? Just add words out of my mouth. And he says, no, mum, mm-hmm. you're bigger. No, you look no. bigger. <laughs> And I'm like, I and it was literally oh, hours apart. God. And I'm like, oh, seriously. God. They're so quick. They're so quick. It's so funny. And you know, okay, so just as we're talking, and, and I will say our guides are never embarrassed of us. They never feel frustrated with no. us. They're never no. exhausted. Um not that drinking. might be our in- they're not drinking. They're not mad. We never get punished by our guys. None of that. They'll we perceive the message as we can receive it. Yes, I explain that all the mm-hmm. time with the mm-hmm. way that I receive mm-hmm. my messages. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So when I was younger, I always said I needed a celestial sledgehammer because I was so stubborn. Not only would no. I not listen, I would argue. And and so my guidance as a younger person in my 20s and 30s, especially, seemed very sarcastic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because that's how I could perceive it, either funny or not. Um, or a little a little spicy, right? And now it's not. It's just information comes in, you know, and I choose to ignore it or argue with it because that's just my MO. And um yeah, so we get we get those things and and kids get messages too yeah kids get kids get kids are very open more open than we actually know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's because they 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 just haven't had that they don't have that filter yet so they actually Mm -hmm. see a lot of spirit as well especially Mm -hmm. babies Mm -hmm. will see yeah an awful Mm -hmm. lot of spirit so Mm -hmm. it's never Mm -hmm. an imaginary friend Nope. Um, it's always um it's always someone from the other side. But they also because we, we were talking about this beforehand about the stupid mistakes that we've made when we haven't oh, grounded yeah. ourselves. And sometimes yeah. we, and it's a mix of not grounding ourselves and being overtired because the amount mm-hmm. of energy that we exert when we are performing we're readings, readings and we're, and, it's a lot and we're on you know we are compl- you know tuned in sometimes for four or five hours at a time and then we we go to do our normal day-to-day life because we don't live on clouds and we don't have unicorns as pets or you know none of that we've still got to do our own laundry um and speak for I'm yourself just, as i look at I the actually, piles in the laundry baskets yeah. i actually don't do my own laundry most of my laundry goes out these days <laughs> i'm gonna I'm say going I'm, to I'm, we've actually we found a service and it, i'm just gonna have to i don't have time i don't especially when i travel because i just empty mm-hmm. my suitcase into the laundry bag book it through the app and she's there and it's gone and comes back the next day and i can't fold fitted sheets like that I would pay that service just for someone to fold my fitted sheets. I am you That's what I do. Um, but That's so- funny. I mentioned fitted sheets on my podcast last week. Oh, really? Why? I did. I was like, if, well, because sometimes people do their laundry while oh, listening okay. to my podcast. And I was like, well, am I helping you get the laundry done? I hope there's not too many fitted sheets because I hate those things. Maybe I'm just sitting and talking to you instead. Yeah, maybe. You know? <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's like... I know what I can do, and physically I'm a bit impaired. Yeah. So I'm outsourcing mm-hmm. as much as I can until no, I am smart. I need to. Until mm-hmm. I am mm-hmm. fixed. So I have my laundry. I have my <laughs> laundry done. It's embarrassing. It's like having a heifer lump. Um, I do my laundry 
Sorry, I had my laundry done. I was like, where was I going with this? Where did this start? Oh, weren't we? <laughs> Just speaking of being ungrounded, what are we doing? What's your name? What's my name? Where are we? Daisy. Um, yeah. it's, it's the dumb shit we do when we're not grounded after readings. Yeah. And if we up in Like, the... forget what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, forget what we're doing. I got a, sp- um, a red light camera ticket. I, I made a post about this. I... Had had a really busy day, but I was on a time crunch. I had to put the dog in the car and get him to the vet because he'd been having one of his vomiting sessions. And touch wood, he's been really well for quite a number of weeks now. But he was really sick. I got in the car and I went across a red light. And I'm like, that, that's it's red. I am so lucky that there wasn't an accident. No, thank God. Or somebody wasn't. Yeah. It's a crossroads, but they mm-hmm. hadn't opened up the green light going across it only opened up the arrow so oh, no. i was very very lucky um, very. and i will wear the fine because it was completely my fault but i have done right. some doozies when i haven't been grounded and when i have been incredibly tired mm. yeah i got into the wrong car I oh actually, i've done that yeah oh god i've done that that's so i've done it more than once mm-hmm yeah, I now and, I have a habit of looking at my license plate because I've done it more than once. I did it. I, more I so. went to the I did it to the wrong car of a different make and model. How like did you I do forgot that? because I forgot about my new car and I went to the nearest car that was like my old car. I was that wiped out. Uh huh. Like, I had just bought that car, right? Right. Okay. I can understand and I went, that. And I had had, I'd had this other car for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And I was on autopilot. And I'm going, and I'm like, why is this car not working? Like, uh-huh. why can't I open it? And then I was like, fuck, I don't even own that brand of car anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've, yeah. I've done yeah. it. I once came out of a cafe and... I had not long bought the car that I've got, which is a very mm-hmm. popular model of a car. It's mm-hmm. also black, which is also very popular. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. But this is what blew my mind, is that I opened the door and got in the other car. Oh, God. And it wasn't until I went, I turned around to put things on the passenger seat and thought, that's not my stuff. And this car is awfully clean because even when I was new, <laughs> that, would be what, that would be one of my first. Wow, this is awfully clean. <laughs> Which fairy has been and cleaned my car whilst I was away? in that cafe? Wow. Getting... My guides have done detail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just woken himself up. But yeah, and I literally, I'm like, and there's, I'm like, so I've got I've got out the car and my car's parked directly behind it. Oh, and I'm like okay. I've got straight into it. But on another occasion, I had a very popular model. I can say it now because I don't own that model. But I had like a champagne color Mazda Tribute, which is like a mm, Ford Explorer mm-hmm. type car. Oh, okay. And mm-hmm. every other person had this car, and I parked outside my friend's house, and I I was picking up my vacuum cleaner because I'd lent it to her. Mm-hmm. And I had come, and she lived right next to the school, but it was like on a court. And I had come out with this vacuum cleaner, and my zapper wouldn't work on the car. So I'm trying mm. to get the key in the boot. And then I've gone, oh, and my car's parked behind hers. So it was just like, yeah. Same same situation, trying to get into somebody else's car. But I do all sorts of shit when I'm not grounded. You know, I cut my finger the other day. I've got a lovely Band-Aid on You did. Finger, and you there did. was a lot of blood um, mm-hmm. because I wasn't focused on what I'm doing. So the lesson is to ground yourselves. Yeah, and body um, and body and body and body and body. Absolutely, because when yeah. we're not in our own body, we are doing stupid stuff and we damage our body. We do. Or we lock an ice cream car in a, in, or an ice cream cake in a car on a 70 degree day. Oh, God. Did the cake survive? It did. It did while I had to wait for a locksmith. And this was during like, um, lockdowns oh you know, no a little bit and but it was my son-in-law's birthday 
And I had got, I had ordered an ice cream cake. I grabbed it. I picked it up. And then I realized I had to run to a grocery store to get something, whether it was candles or something for that Mm -hmm. day. I don't even remember what it was. And I got back to my car because I ran in, ran out. My key was on the seat. And I've never locked my keys in a car. Oh, I've done it more than once. This is why we have AAA. And um, (laughs) AAA is everything. (laughs) And so I call. I get a locksmith coming. And there's these dudes that roll up. And I have a mask on, right? So I have a black mask on. And the one thing for our listeners, Scorpio Risings are, like, infamous for the resting bitch faces and are drop-dead glares. Like, Mm -hmm. we're very good at giving the thousand-yard stare. And... You know, and I have to like remember to smile or I look like a psycho killer. Okay. And now in Mandarin, I'm covered up and I have these intense eyes and I was wearing my contact lenses. So you can really see it at that point. And these dudes roll up in this like, like souped up jalopy, you know, and, and this is Southern California. So people will have stuff like bounce in, you know, and think like, like in movies where they bounce their cars it's a suspension oh, yeah, thing. yeah 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 but these guys were like in our age group and there's nothing sleazier than a man in his 50s who thinks he's hot oh a man in his 50s mm. wearing a gold chain go on kind of yeah it's mm-hmm. very much like that and they've got their music blaring and they're bouncing and and i was i was in much better shape at the time and i had just had a t-shirt and jeans and i've got a mask on and I'm waiting on my phone and these guys are like, obviously trying to get my attention. They get out of their car. Right. And they're like, they're going to walk somewhere, but they're, they're literally just trying to get my attention. And it was obvious because they weren't moving on. Right. And I'm trying to ignore them. And one of them kind of whistles in my direction. Right. And I just, yeah. And I'm like, and with all this, just the dead eye. Uh-huh. <laughs> the looks on their faces. <laughs> Fia? Just got back in their car and drove to the other side of the parking lot. <laughs> and it, it was mostly, I'm really annoyed. I'm like, I have locked an ice cream car, right? ice cream cake in my car. Uh-huh. It is sunny. The sun is streaming into my vehicle. And I'm, wait, they didn't know this. And I'm not going to explain it. But that was 90%. And then I'm like, and you're hitting on me? Oh, fuck off. You know, yeah. it's like, I have ice cream cake in my car. Um, you think yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. There, it was yeah. just dumb. It was really weird, too. I'm like, why Why do you pick up people in a parking lot? Like, uh, but t- it's not safe as well. Two men. People, they're not getting the message. The bear? Are you going to be in the woods alone with a bear or a man? They're not getting the message. And I just, in. The fact that anybody's offended that anybody would pick a bear just shows how insecure they are. Yeah. But like, we have when... had 34 women killed in australia and i understand a lot of these the listeners are in america but this is huge Mm -hmm. for us one every four days since the beginning of the year has Mm. a female been killed from a domestic partnership or by a man and this is huge for australia so it is horrific so why two men Mm -hmm. should approach Mm -hmm. a lone female in a shopping center and think that they are going to get anything but death rays is the entitlement it's It's the entitlement it's the entitlement and i just i cannot stand it and i am so glad Mm -hmm. that i've had the opportunity to raise men for who men should be um and i've told you i come from a hugely misogynistic family i wouldn't trust yeah i wouldn't trust a female with any of my extended family Mm mm-hmm uh, so, and that says a lot, but I would trust mm-hmm. anyone with my children, my adult Yeah, I children. feel that way about my son. Yeah. 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 And, my son's and a good man. I raised a good man. Yeah, I've raised a good man. And then mm-hmm. my children's partners will say to me, they mm-hmm. have such amazing manners. Yeah. And that yeah. always makes me incredibly yeah. happy. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I took Gloria Steinem's advice. Don't raise your daughters to be like their fathers. Raise your sons to be like their mothers. You know, and mm -hmm. and I think it's important, you know. Yeah, to, it's to important. Not every mom is great, obviously, but... No. Sorry, you, can, <laughs> you told me that. Yeah, no, <laughs> well, yeah, no, I know. Not every mom is great, and and some of that is because of power dynamics and yeah. people get broken for whatever reasons. Um, yeah, yeah, lots of reasons. But it, it's good to do that. But yeah, when we're when we're when we're not with speaking it, of and... bears, by the way, I, in real life, true story, I had a bear run away from me. Yeah, so you, it's tell like me yeah, story. So tell yeah, me this yeah. So again, lived in a state park in lived Washington state, park. state. She can scare off two men in a parking lot. So let's hear her scare off a bear. Right. <laughs> it was like three in the morning and I, I'd been working on a website or something. And I heard my daughter, my daughter was like maybe 12 at the time. And I was just learning how to really build these juicy websites. And um, I heard her cat, which was an outdoor cat ranger swiss cheese it was a, a feral cat she adopted and named right that we would feed okay uh -huh. so ranger switch swiss cheese let out an ungodly screech in the middle of the night i the idiot that i am ran out my front door to see what was happening uh-huh i see jay now as one does, yes. So the the island we lived on was actually connected to the mainland by a bridge because it was only an island because of a slough, okay? Of a, right. I mean, there's water that passed through, salt water that passed through. Um, and so occasionally we would get animals from the hills or the mountains that would, especially in the summertime, be looking for food water what have you so sometimes young cougars and young bears might get to the island rare but it happened okay i have always had bad eyes i have exceptionally good hearing as i exit my door to see why the cat scream i hear this very large body running in my direction so though Southern, southern. And I'm like, shit, that's really big. That's bigger than a deer. Because I happen to know what a deer sounds like. Because I live in a forest and I've heard many deer, right? We had a lot of them. That's bigger than a dog. Because we had a large dog. I had a 120 pound dog. So I'm like, that is bigger than my dog. So I stand like this my arms are up and i am frozen because that's what you do when there's a big thing you you stand still okay you don't flail your arms you don't do nothing you just stand still because you got to see what's going on so this very large and remember it's very dark it's a moonless night it was probably like a new moon so this this big sheep runs out of the forest hits the pavement right where our driveway was there was pavement hits that like with its feet decides this is not good gets scared loops through my driveway and around in front of the front steps and all i see as it's racing i didn't see its head i saw its ass and it was the shape of a bear and its legs were like a bear the hind quarters was a bear and it was terrified. So it must have figured out that roads were scary. And it wouldn't right. have been a big black bear. So it wasn't a full adult. It wasn't a baby. It was like maybe a teenager uh -huh. know, age bear. Right? Young, young adult bear. And I'm like this. Because if I make noise and draw it to me, it, get my, it gets in my house. My uh. kids are in my house. I'm like, all right, I'll take the sacrifice. You know, as one does. Okay. Yeah, and the next day, or that morning, when I once I wake up, and um, and my heart is of course pitter patter, pitter patter, but bear has moved on. I tell the ranger, my husband, hey, last night there was a bear. Oh, are you sure? It wasn't a dog. Well, are you sure about that, dude? It was bigger. I mean, like it'd have to be a Tibetan mastiff. 
if it was a <laughs> if it was a dog. Poo pooed me. There's a reason we're divorced. Gets done with his day, comes back home, and says, "We found bear scat, mm-hmm. and scat is poo." Okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you did, because there was a bear. So the bear was afraid. Yeah. But I have found men are not unless I give them the death glare. (laughs) Because they're like, that bitch is crazy. I'm like, oh, so crazy. Yeah, so So crazy. crazy. Will get crazy on you, I don't and not know in a why good they way. I think that that it's saying that a woman is crazy is a slight on them. No, yeah, we're crazy. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm crazy. I have a toxic trait. Well, many. I have many toxic traits, but Me my, too. Toxic trait, my toxic trait <laughs> is I love videos of bears that play with play equipment and get in. Oh my pools. god. It's- so funny i don't think that's toxic at all they're so I want to funny go and cuddle them because i think that you know i want to give them a cocktail or hand them some nuts i don't know but they look so cute and they look like they've had a really long day and their kids are really annoying them and they just need to sit in the pool for they're a little so while. funny i love it when the mama bears are like i've had enough uh-huh. the hot tub is mine stay out yeah you know yeah i would not want to cuddle a bear well but... i know that they're dangerous <laughs> but you know the yeah, same as black bears black bears honestly are more scared of humans they, they're less likely to aggress you are they but scared? they're not something you want to cut they they're they're cautious you know they're they're cautious grizzlies on the other hand ugh. um what are the ones that get in the those. hot tubs and things like that are they grizzly most bears? of what you, m- most of what you're seeing is is black bears okay so i don't know the difference it's like you know grizzly bears are like the grizzly bears are the ones that like live at yellowstone park and okay not as common Mm -hmm. but yeah i love the ones when they get on the kids you know the swing the big round swing yes kids when they get on that and they just they like oh my god the kids aren't on it i can get on it and they're so excited it's like you know they've been there before you know that this is not their first time. Yeah, yeah, it's not their um, first rodeo. But I, mm-hmm. I can spend hours watching bear videos. And, They're funny. And I'm okay with dog videos, but if they could stop dying on me, I'd be very happy because I have seen so many of the dogs that I follow on social media over the last couple of weeks have died, and I've been very, very sad watching them. Yeah. And there was a guy who. Do you remember the band that went through the UK, the XL Bullies, Pitbull Band? Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a guy that I had followed during that. He used to breed XL Bullies, but he's following it. He gave a lot of people advice. He was driving around the country trying to save dogs that needed rehoming. He was taking them to Scotland. He he had a GoFundMe going to pay exemption fees for people that couldn't afford it, the insurance and all of that. He was amazing. And he's he's like a an average guy on an estate in um, the northeast of England. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have followed him because I I really rate him. He also reminds me of my son Mm. image-wise. And his dog, his staffy, Max, died last week. And we hate that. It was the, he was 15 or 14 and a half. Aww. And I sobbed and I sobbed, but I sobbed more because the the guy was sobbing. Like he couldn't oh, yeah. get yeah, he was just a mess. Yeah. Um yeah. and I was oh my heart broke for him. Mm. And then another one of his dogs got rushed to the vet and all sorts of stuff. And it's just so sad. Mm. And then someone else's staffy that was other another staffy or a pit bull that had been Maisie, I think her name was, and she was really mm. old, and she died last week as well. And I'm like, could you mm. please stop all dying on me? Because I just right. lose hours sobbing my heart out watching. Yeah, so can we yeah. have some cheerful dog videos on? Yeah, cheerful dog TikTok, videos. please. Yeah, I've been. Have you seen that TikTok trend where people pick up their animals and it's a Johnny Cash song? Yes, I want to do that with Barf. I uh, no. I'm not gonna pick him up. There's no way I can. He's a 200 pound Saint Bernard. Yeah, well, but I want to get I want to get the tripod out and go and just hold his head, stick him out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I, I can I can maybe hold his head. Yeah, I just like I can't. There's no way that I could pick this one up. There's not a hope right? in hell. 
I it have could be to. Malcolm. Um, you could do it with Malcolm. But yeah, these people these... that are picking up their two pound two hours and doing it have some I saw for us. I... I had a, I saw a guy though pick up and barely able to get. He had a very chunky lab mix, and uh-huh. you could tell it was a formidable size dog, but as big around almost as he was tall. Right, he's, he's maybe an <laughs> older dog, and he's like, Ugh! and the dog's like grinning and his tail's wagging. And yeah, that was pretty cute. Yeah, so. I just no, not going to happen in this house. I have no right. intention of doing that. But, uh, yeah, so ground yourself, people, because you do stupid things yeah. and then you go down and, the rabbit yeah. hole of TikTok dog videos and cry a lot. Yeah. And this week, guys, it's really important to ground yourself. There's so much going on in the world. It's going to be a yeah. very intense weekend. Um, Try not to we're panic. Purposely, yeah, don't panic. The world is not coming to an end. It will almost appear that way by the time we get to the weekend but it is not Uh it is not and those who can hold their cool and ground take a deep breath and and even if you have a hard time meditating like if you have a really busy mind it's okay you don't have to try to get an empty mind just count your breathing and don't do shallow breaths you know you got to take a nice deep inhale I find lying on my back and actually taking the deep breaths makes a difference mm-hmm. because you don't realize mm-hmm. how little you open up your diaphragm when mm-hmm. you're sat or standing. Mm-hmm. So if you can take five minutes to lie mm-hmm. on the ground and do mm-hmm. some deep breathing, we mm-hmm. will get through this. It is just mm-hmm. going to be a very spicy, Thanks extra ramp up spicy. From here. You know, you know, on the menu mm-hmm. when you get the one spice, two spice, and three Sorry. spice, choices, the little chilies. Yes. Yeah, the little chilies. We're on number three this week, but it will go down to a one or a two, two in weeks to come. Is that a good way to explain it? I, I think we're at a three, and we hit a five in July. But we're not going to be running at a three, four, four for the next six weeks. We're going to have some reprieve and then it's going to go up to spicy and then it's going to go and we might hit a 10 chili by October. Oh, it's it's an 11. But yeah, um, it goes down to, I don't know that it goes down to a one though. Yeah. It goes, maybe a two. Maybe a two. It depends on what part of the world you're in. And yeah, and that's weather. what you're facing, and and yeah, we're talking about yeah. weather as well. It's not yeah, just it's, it's not just politics. But there, there are so. no mushroom clouds happening. Okay, I don't know. Well, there Mm-mm. will be threat of mushroom no. clouds. Yep. Um, but I and don't you want literally to. hear world leaders like threaten each other with it. But yeah. they're musically just whipping out their dicks and and well, they're having willy waving competitions. I yeah. like to say, who's got yeah. the biggest willy? Mm-hmm. But women are too emotional to lead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One of my favorite short skits that I've seen lately is Hannah Gadsby and oh, yeah. her talk on why, you know, why men need to bring themselves in check and, mm-hmm. you know, their re- her reasoning. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. I wish wonderful. I had the eloquence that she had. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things I always tell people is humility is for men. So men men need to grow humble. Women don't need to be more humble. We're, no, we're humble enough. Yeah, men need to count themselves. They need to count each other accountable as well. They really mm-hmm. do not hold, yes, them, they do. hold each other accountable, and I think no. that's half the problem. And yeah. they think that other people judge them so- judge them on the bigger car the you know how they the the, the more power they have etc cetera, etc cetera. no i'm not attracted to power i don't know about Mm-mm. you but i'm not attracted to power at all i'm attracted um, to real power but that's somebody who knows who they are and yeah. is confident and self-possessed but it doesn't mean arrogance and it isn't about what you can buy or who you can make do what i'm never into domineering behavior yeah i want to yeah. know what the women are like that are attracted to donald trump 
are they really attracted? You know, we had that fetish conversation last week. Oh, God, I wonder yeah. if it's a, it's a special fetish or there's a special club for it or is it a clown fetish? I don't know. <laughs> it's a <laughs> clown fetish. <laughs> because apparently um, somebody told me that there were signs saying real men wear diapers in New York. Oh, I saw No, no, I saw that. And it wasn't a fetish. It was... Um, no, no. It, I know that's it was not a for, fetish. It was like a... Yeah, it was a political rally. Yeah, but real men wear diapers. I'm not talking. Of, I'm. I'm. I'm just saying. As you know, is an attraction to Donald Trump a specific fetish? Have the it women be, had I think with parts of their fame, brains removed? I think with. I think sometimes people are attracted to what they perceive as power and fame. <sighs> I don't. You didn't. See I, me let you sneeze. I let you sneeze. I let you let me. You let me because I'm kind <laughs> and I'm considerate and I'm thoughtful and I didn't disrupt it. <laughs> Wasn't I? Thank you. I didn't say it before you sneezed, though. It would have been helpful, though, to stop the sneeze. Yeah. You need I, to. Really I get annoyed when I. I get annoyed when I sneeze. In fact, my sight, speaking of sins, oh my God, it's so funny. So I, there's this thing. I'll sneeze once, I'll sneeze twice, and on the third one, I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I didn't. Because they're very violent, you know? And my son noticed that when he was a teenager. He's like, hey, mom, did you know that you sneeze once, you sneeze twice, and on the third one, you're like, you sneeze, you're fuck! <laughs> so I was like, I didn't, but then I paid attention and I did. It's like, is it like a special Tourette's that we need to be aware of for? <laughs> Probably. I, I think I just get annoyed. I have violent sneezes. I get it from my dad. I'd wet myself. If I sneezed that violently, I would wet myself. Sorry. I just, sorry, TMI, but you know. I went um, potty before we did the podcast. Yeah. Well, I went potty too. <laughs> my son's first, one of his first words was funk. It was one of Sarah's. I am. I I had this old Volvo. I was heavily pregnant with my second son, and when we put it into reverse, it was new. Like it was old, but we just bought it. Right. And when we put it into reverse, there was something wrong with the gear sticks, and smoke mm -hmm. started to come out. So we and the word that my husband used every time this happened was "oh fuck." So we had to take it back to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, and it was a an automatic. So during that time, my um, ex-husband had to travel overseas unexpectedly. So my mother flew over from England because I was heavily pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I picked her up at the airport and I pulled the, reversed the car out of the car, the parking lot, and I stalled it. It wasn't the smoke thing. It wasn't fixed. And the first words out of my son's mouth, who was sat in the back, was, oh, fuck. I swear. <laughs> I thought my mother was going to spontaneously combust. She oh, that's was, hilarious. Like, she was trying so hard not to laugh because... She didn't want him to see. To, oh, to encourage it. To yeah, encourage yeah. It. It's funny. Keep saying it. Yeah. But she thought it was hilarious considering my grandmother had visited us in Germany from Ireland. And one of my first words was shit because I couldn't put my boot on. So she said, what comes around goes around. Right. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. Sarah was like 18 months. Luckily, no one was around. Uh-huh. And she had a little sippy cup. And she was walking across the floor and it fell out of her hands. You know how things will slip out of your hands. It fell on the floor and it spilled. And she looked down and she went, fuh. And I real and just perfect intonation. And it was just like like if I did something, I was like, fuck. You know. Yeah. It was just perfect. And I was, like, was watching oh, you. Man, I have to watch my mouth. So I and I did until my kids were like teenagers. I, you know, once yeah, they were I, older teenagers, they didn't we've care. We've got to have one mess up. It's got to happen at least mm -hmm. once for us to realize how much mm -hmm. they sponge and how much information they oh, They're get. watching everything. They're watching everything. And um, it's we've got to have one mess up for one of them to actually drop one of the bad words that we were using for us to clean our mouths up and stop doing it because then I cleaned my mouth up until my children I were did, yeah. teenagers. And yeah, 
And I know I've got a potty mouth and I can swear like oh, a sinner on too. shore leave. Yeah. Ah, deal with it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to join the Country Women's Association at any time soon. No. And, you know, people like that do more damage with a smile on their face uh-huh. and bless your heart uh-huh. um, than being plain spoken. Yeah. So I'd rather be a plain spoken person. And if anyone ever tries to tell me what to do or say on social media, they will get blocked immediately because I am 53 years old and I am not answerable to anyone. No shit. God, your last video that I saw, it, well, it, you probably need <laughs> quite a few more before this aired, but the one where you told her, see you next Tuesday for drinks was great. But I got told up they, and it was men. It was men telling me in my comment section that I didn't need to behave like that to get attention or you're not that sort of, don't tell me what sort of person I am in my comment section because you don't know me. And certainly if you're a man, do not tell me how to behave. Yeah. I got no. so that was a bit passive aggressive. No, there was no passiveness about that aggression. No, you're <laughs> aggressive aggressive. <laughs> For fuck's sake. But people need to get it right. That was not passive. That you were just trying passive. not to you were just trying not to get a community violation. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is that they don't realise that there was four messages before that message yeah. that she gave me. And that's why I asked the final one. I had been right. very kind until that point. Gloves and were I, off. And then the gloves yeah. were off because if you don't understand spirituality, just speak out and I will explain it to you. Mm-hmm. And don't come into my comment section and telling me what I should and should not be saying because I am 53 years old. My father tried that for a really long period of time. I was married for 20 years and he tried that for 20 years. I am not answerable to anybody. Well, mm-hmm. I am, but he's asleep down here. Right, exactly. But and that's it. That, that yeah, too- I I get annoyed with people and their tone policing. I I don't get it as much now, but I honestly don't post as much as I used to. Um, although there's somebody who's like he thinks he's a gunslinger. I think he's uh, been coming for me. I yes, um, I have seen him. The one that, mm-hmm. that's a mix between a used car salesman and a politician that doesn't know what side of the fence he's on. But that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not responding because that's what they want me to do. They're trying to draw me into a fight. And it's like I was explaining it to my son-in-law like this. Like imagine you're an old gunslinger and some young person comes in wanting to duel, you know, and it's like, you don't want to pick a fight, dude. Um, and and he's just trying to grow his audience. It's it's a marketing technique, mm-hmm. and it's called controversy marketing. Yeah, no, no, I I, I know exactly yeah. what he's doing, but that's it, like a, mm-hmm. used, a politician will always bash yeah. someone else to mm-hmm. get the attention. Mm-hmm. He's not very bright. Um, no. oh, who's that? Actress? I did I did make a passive aggressive. Oh, did video you? For the Taurus New Moon. You saw it. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Um, yeah. There was a little shot over the bow. But he know. probably is not intelligent enough to actually understand it. No? I think it's, you never know. It, I'm sure it'll piss him off because mm-hmm. he's easily, he's. I had, do you remember Astro Larry? I got rid of Astro Larry. But oh, I had, did you? I did because it's Lori thinks out loud now. Because eventually I'll talk about other stuff. Right. There. Okay. Um, and he thought Astro Larry was about him. No. And I had Astro Larry since like 2022. He was just a fun. Tool. He was just a character. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was proving misogyny because people people were listening to some. It was another male astrologer, not this guy. And the guy wasn't quite right. He wasn't a horrible astrologer. It's just, I was getting annoyed that people were listening to that message and I'd get people questioning mine because right. I'm a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people don't always realize how much misogyny is involved in their perceptions, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so I put on a beard filter 
And I recorded it. I was like, hey, maybe if I sound like a dude, you people will listen to me. And I played it back and I went, wow, I'm listening more to me. Fuck that shit. You know, and so that's how Astro Larry got born. Astro Larry was um, strange, strangely attracted to Astro Larry. Larry. Astro Larry. Astro Larry was very into me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Although what was really funny was the amount of followers who were like, oh, my God, you're a hot dude. And I'm like, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And it, but it was the beard filter. Because if I put on like a fake goatee, because I bought one, you know, that you use spirit gun mm-hmm. to put on. Because I thought, oh, well, I'll do a little drag king work. Oh, no. No, no. It's not attractive. That beard filter, like, masculinized my face. Yeah. And that's why I looked like, I actually looked like my son. I, I did it and I looked like my brother. And because mm. I've got a brother that's like my twin. Mm-mm. And, yeah, it was, it was a strange thing. Yeah, I was like, wow. My son and I, which I know my son and I look like, but it was just really, I'm like, I, I, they look like my son. This is strange. I will, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also, one of the things was, is, you know, dry kings don't get very much attention and I think they should. It I takes talent. I have been to see a drag king. I've seen a million mm-hmm. drag queens and mm-hmm. there's a place um, not far from me called the Piano Bar that has mm-hmm. um like sing alongs mm-hmm. on a and they're all from the you know seventies, eighties, nineties. They often fun. have drag queens come in. It's great fun. fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and they'd have drag queen bingo. Oh, I love that. You know, speaking of mothers and drag queens, because we've talked about children and what mm-hmm. have you. So there was a very famous drag queen in Portland, Oregon, named Marcel, and he passed away, I think, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, very iconic human being, wonderful community member. And that fellow that invited me to his dungeon. Oh, yes. One of our first dates, we went to Marcel's club in Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And Marcel stopped in the middle of his show as he was walking around all the tables singing and looked at me dead in the eye and went, are you Sandy's daughter? I'm on a date. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I recognize you. She's shown me all your pictures. Oh, honey, you're back in the States. (laughs) Oh I mean, the whole God. in front of God and everything. And I'm like, cool. And the guy's like, who's seeing him? Your, your mom? And I'm like, yeah, my mom comes here after work. Because my mom worked downtown Portland at the time. And um, yeah. So I was like, that's great. Well, that's got to be a first. It was everywhere. Anywhere my mother went. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. This is my daughter. That's what happened. So, yeah. But Marcel was lovely. Yeah. Lovely. I lovely like, human I like being. A good, gra- a, a good drag yeah. show, I must admit. I do. I but really it would be nice if, if drag kings got as much of the attention. Because it takes skill. It does. It's not easy to act like a dude. You'd think it would be. You'd think because they're fairly simple, it would be easy. But it's kind of hard to boil yourself down to that simple. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I think that we shall wrap up for this week and yeah, um, we will see you in next week. Yeah. Yeah. Take deep breaths and and it'll this too shall pass. It'll be okay. It will, We're just in, it will yeah. pass. But we hope we've given you some reprieve from the energy yeah. out there. Yeah. 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 That's the goal of this. Absolutely. That's the goal. Alrighty, folks. We'll see. We'll catch you next Next week. week. Thanks for joining us.